Hey, in this video, I want to introduce you to media queries. Uh, in generally speaking, responsive website design, and I want to show you how I use media queries to make responsive websites. So I'm going to actually start from scratch. I mean, this is a brand new, fresh, fresh code pen. There's nothing even saved here, so I'm just going to save, rename this to responsive web design, and we don't need the JavaScript panel, so we just need the HTML panel. So I'm going to take you through basically building out a simple desktop version of a website and then apply media queries to it to make it mobile responsive and it's a very basic demonstration of it so that this way you can get an idea of what media queries are how they work and how to apply them so so first thing I'm first I'm going to start off with just a div give it a class of container okay cool and let's get that going and inside this div container we're going to go ahead and have our content now the naming convention here, this is just my own style. If you have your own, by all means, you don't need to conform to this at all. So in the content we're gonna have, this will be like, for instance, uh, posts. So it'll be like maybe blog posts here. Maybe you're building a blog website or something like that, where there's basically content and then you have a sidebar as well. And actually before I even, deviate too far from here inside this container at the top I want to put the header I'm going to include the header tag the aside tag and the footer tag so we're using HTML5 tags as well class of site sidebar I mean uh, sorry header and the reason why I'm giving this header tag a class to begin with is because you can use the header tag in different parts of your website so you want to be specific in terms of well, exactly what header this is and how you want to target that so I'm going to make sure to save this Okay, so in here we'll just put h1 uh, responsive website design. I think I misspelled that. Website design, cool. And we'll also want to give it another h2 uh, media queries. All right. Okay, so we have our header. We're going to start building out our content. Notice I'm not jumping into the CSS just yet. I always save that for the last part. Article close article I'm gonna make a p tag some lorem text in here just really quick and if you don't know how to include lorem text with um, code pane just type in the word lorem or lowercase and right after M no spaces hit the tab key and there you go very cool and now that we have our post area I will also create our side area give it a class of site sidebar uh, site sidebar and in here I'm just gonna create an unordered list this could be something like recent post or something else on the website recent posts you know any uh, sidebar content you can think of would maybe fall into here put some uh, list items in here and also below this we'll just include a footer as well as well so class site footer and go ahead and put a note here. Oops. Site footer. All right. And a P tag. Uh, copyright, maybe. Something like that. Okay. So here we have just a basic, nothing special website. I'm going to approach this using CSS floats. Uh, and then I'm going to. If, I'm going to try to include uh, Flexbox in it as well. It just depends how deep we get into it. Uh, because Flexbox is really my preferred method of uh, designing and laying out websites. But I know a lot of people, I think most people still use CSS floats. So I'll, I'll stick with that for now. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and create our uh, CSS here. So what, what I'm going to do first is create a background color. So we're going to target the body tag, um, background. And I'm using this color palette here on Adobe's color.adobe.com website. And for my background color, I'm going to pick this blue, this dark blue color here. Cool. And I'll do, I'll do this with traditional CSS, but you can certainly use uh, SAS in here by clicking this little gear icon and then switch into SAS over here. So you can use that instead. But I'll stick with traditional just to keep it pretty straightforward. Font family, sans serif. Cool. And when I target this container here, I'm going to move this up a bit. Okay, and I want to give this a background color as well. And the background color for that container, I'll do this kind of a green color here. Okay, pop 
pop that in as well, just so you can see the container. We give this a max width, and you'll see why I'm using max width instead of percentages, for example. So max width 960 pixels. Uh, that may be too far. Uh, just for demonstration, I'll make this 600 pixels. Perfect. And I'm going to center this by using the margin zero auto technique. So I will go there. I'm also going to shift it from the top to rem, from the top and bottom. There you go. And I'm also going to give this a padding all the way around of 1.5 rems. That, that's where there's a little padding nicely, neatly around it. Okay. So what I want to do now, we have our header portion. Let's go ahead and outline that header portion as well. So site header. Okay, let's give the header color, I guess, this lighter green color. Let's go with that. Background. And I'm also going to give this a padding of 1.5 rems. There you go. And next thing we want to target is this content here. Okay. Content. I'm going to also give this the same background and the same padding as well. So what that means is that we can actually include both of these like so. And I can also do the same with the footer as well. So it's actually site footer. Okay, perfect. And I'm also going to give, give this a margin of, uh, actually we're target, we can target the content. Let's see, give it a margin of 1.5 RM and then zero. Perfect. So that way we have a margin from the top and the bottom. So we have this kind of distribution. So this is kind of, a, I guess, a mobile first approach where you have the mobile version of the website completed. So how would you make this a um, desktop version, for for example? So we can we can go about it that way. It doesn't really matter. So this is what media queries are. This is the Mozilla uh, developer um, documentation. And this is the media query portion. So here's some examples of various media queries you can use. So if you want to target uh, printers, for example, if you want to have special styles for printers, you would do at media and then print. And then uh, depending on your um, uh, sort of argument here, screen size, the width size, things like that, resolution size, uh, max width, min width, these are the things you can include in here. Uh, you can apply different styles. In our case, we're just going to use at media screen because we want to target just the screen. We don't want to target the printer as well. For example, things might look a little funky. Uh, or so. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and target uh, media. So what I want to do is I'm going to use the min width argument. And what we want to actually do is have this uh, sidebar here. So the post will be floated to the left. Uh, okay, so we can actually go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and target posts. And let's see here. Posts will be floated to the left. So I'm going to do float left. Uh, let's see, did I mess up on something? Oh yeah, we also need to give it a width as well. So post will be width 60%. Okay, you can see what's happening here is that we have uh, collapsing containers. To, to fix this really quickly, we can just use overflow hidden. This is one way to fix it. You can use the clear fix method. And as you can see here, we have our uh, posts area here floated to the left and our sidebar here floated right next to it. Let's go ahead and I want to outline that sidebar as well, just so you can see it. Site sidebar, border, two pixel solids. Give this a color as well. Maybe this kind of a line color here, just so we could see it. There it is. And I want to give this a width of, let's say, 30%. And there it is here. I'm going to float this to the right. And there you go. So we have our posts over here. And then we have our sidebar there. So this is a floated version. So let's say, for instance, if you're doing responsive website design and you want to take this and make this sort of stack on top of one of these. You can see as soon as I re reduce this size here, this gets a little bit funky, particularly the sidebar over here. So how do we address that? So basically you need to think of it this way. The styles you applied here works really well, let's say on a desktop uh, environment. Uh, but the thing is you need new styles to apply it maybe at this area. So, okay, so one way we could do is you could change the view to full page view. So I'm gonna right click, open the link in a new tab, full page view. And the reason why I'm doing that is when I pull up the inspector here, and if I reduce this, uh, window here you'll see that if you look in the top right hand corner of my browser here you'll see the width change the numbers there 10 you see that numbers 
change right here. So that I'm looking at that to see where we think we should have the breakpoint. So I'm thinking around 610 pixels would be a good time to have a breakpoint. So I'm going to come back over here. Let's get rid of this. Here we go. So I'm thinking as soon as this gets to 610, we'll have these things stack. So in here, we want to create at media screen and max width 610 pixels. So what I'm saying here is that at media screen, so anytime you have a device with a screen, and if the device's width is below 610 pixels, apply these styles. So if it's above 610 pixels, don't apply these styles, okay? So we wanna target uh, the cont uh, the posts, and we wanna target site sidebar and do different things. We wanna overwrite these styles, for example. So I'm gonna target posts. I'm gonna do float none. And then we want to do with 100%. And we can do the exact same thing to the sidebar. Comma, site, dash, sidebar. So this way now they both stack. So if you're over here on the desktop, for example, this is what it looks like. If you're over here, uh, this is what it looks like there. So if you were to flip this and take the whole mobile first approach technique, for example. So for instance, you wouldn't have uh, these floats over here. So I'm going to get rid of that. And you let's keep that border there. Sure. Get rid of that as well. So this is what our website looks like right now on a regular mobile device. And so let's, let's clear these out as well just so we start from scratch so we have nothing going on so this is our mobile first approach so all the containers are stacked once you get to a desktop approach this doesn't make too much sense because you have all this space here that you can use to take up with the sidebar so we want to target the post and the sidebar to have it do the same thing but instead of max width we want to do min width and what min width is doing is that anything that's above if the viewport this portion here is above 610 pixels then go ahead and apply these styles so let's go ahead and do that now. So I want to target the posts. I want to do float left. I want to give this a width of 60%. I want to target the site sidebar. Float right and give this a width of 30%. So again, we're virtually doing the same things, just kind of in reverse. So if you're on a phone, it looks like this. As soon as you get above 600 pixels, you have this layout as well. So you can take it one way or the other. So essentially, that's up to you and how you want to address or design your website uh, to give it uh, the responsive design. So all the, the basic idea is that you have these media queries. So add media screen. So always start with add media screen and then decide what you want to do here in terms of what you want to change. So you have to look at your website and kind of do this kind of shrink the viewport uh, make it smaller make it larger and see what it looks like see what what could be changed at this breakpoint or at this breakpoint and so on and so forth so that's basically it there's really not much more to it than that uh, you can then decide things like orientation you want an orientation portrait have a different uh, styles that it will apply at that uh, at that br breakpoint so if you have a media screen and orientation landscape you know you can apply different styles for that and so on and so forth. So that's basically it. I'll, I'll include a link to this as well. So all these things, these are all the different systems you can use uh, for your website. So, you, you know, your website could be a lot different than this. I certainly hope, you know, it could be more complicated than this. Uh, but then you, you, sort, you sort of have to decide, you know, how you want to apply these media queries to make it responsive. Um, so let's go ahead and make this also, let's, let's attempt to do this as a Flexbox container. So for those of you who are interested in Flexbox. So the way Flexbox works, very different, just a little little quick introduction to Flexbox. So instead of having all these floats and things like that, you will, you would use a Flexbox on the Flexbox container. In our case, content includes uh, both post and the site sidebar. Here it is right over here. So we want to target that uh, content. We want to do a display flex, so which will essentially make it a flex box container. And again, we're using the min width, so uh, this is the desktop version. So anything above 610 will have this these uh, flex box styles. Anything below won't. Okay, so display flex, and what I want to do now is target the um, posts because now this is a flex box item. So let's do 60% here, and we want to target the reduce this. Uh, the site sidebar, give this a width of 30%, 
and here's our layout so you can see there's some gap over here so we target that container we do justify content and I'll do space between and there you go so you have a post over here and the sidebar over here and one really cool thing about Flexbox unlike uh, floats is that you can see the height here they, they match each other so if you wanted to revert back to the way you had it with the floats you can actually do align items equals uh, flex start and there you go so this resembles more of a float look uh, so that's up to you but you can also do things like uh, align item center so that should be in the center of the flex box items so a lot of cool flexibility I'll include a link to my uh, flex box video as well and that's it